Okay, so we asked two questions. Let's start with the easier one. The solution will be padding. So to remove the ambiguity about the plain text length that are not divisible by the block size B, a structured set of bits can be concatenated to the end of the plain text. This operation is called padding. Inappropriate padding schemes can be dangerous. There are many examples in the past. Just because you did a wrong padding actually may leak the secret key. Okay, It is that dangerous. The best padding scheme is to append a single one bit to the end of the message and then appending as many zero bits as required. So this way you know the structure and this removes the ambiguity. So let me show it with an example. So for a block size of 32 bits, here we have three bytes to add four bits. So you have to add a one byte padding, which starts with a single bit of one, then seven zero. So in hexadecimal notation, this corresponds to 80, right? So this 80 part is the padding as a byte. So if it were uh, missing two bytes, it will be, you know, zero, zero here. So this is the idea, add a single one bit and then add, add as many zeros as we want. So when the person received this, since we agreed to perform padding, they removed every zero at the end and the first one bit they see at the end, then say that this is the message, okay? So here another question arises, but what happens if I want to send this as the plain text book, right? Because if I send this directly, then that person might think that this is from the padding. So the solution is that if you really want to send this plain text block, which is a multiple of the block size, you have to add an extra block for the padding. So this way the person again removes the padding and end up with your message. So this causes a message expansion. So you wanted to send a single block, but now you are encrypting and sending two blocks, right? So uh this is not so much of a problem if you are sending huge files for instance if you are sending a one gigabyte of file then adding extra block you know doesn't cause that much of a bandwidth problem or so for decrypting if you are decrypting a one gigabyte file you know decrypting one block more wouldn't cause of a problem so in general this message expansion is not that much of a problem but this would be a problem if you are doing it for like cases like <clears throat> full disk encryption because you know in your disk you don't have a place to write this extra block right so there are some solutions to avoid this kind of message expansion before moving on let me give some uh, padding examples in classical cipher so this padding problem is not only related to modern cipher so recall the classical ciphers where you use pen and papers, beginning and ending of official messages are predictable, right? They may be starting like my dear ambassador, or they may be ending like sincerely yours. So you can, if you capture the cipher text, you can also guess the beginning and ending of the plain text. So this way you can find weaknesses in the ciphers and break it. To avoid this problem, what people did in the past is as follows. They chose random words and letters and added to the beginning and end at the end. So uh, whenever you give write a message, you give the in military give the uh, officer at the be, uh, at the stop of telegram. So they add random words to the beginning and at the end, encrypt it, then send it encrypted this way. So the other uh, person at the end of the uh, telegraph line, the officer decrypts it and removes the unnecessary words at the beginning and at the end, and then gives the plain text to the uh, soldier that the message is for. So, yeah, these extra words and letters are removed after decoding. So, if you do it in a wrong way, this causes a problem, and there's a very famous example from Second World War. So, during World War II, Admiral Chester Nimitz sends the message various repeat various task force 34 to Admiral William Halsey. So these are two admirals fighting Japanese carriers in during the Second World War. But the radio office thought that the padding at the end actually belonged to the message, and he decrypted as various repeat various task force 34, the world wonders. So the person who is encrypting it added these random words, the world wonders. But the person who decrypts this 
Couldn't decide if it is from padding or it is really the original message. So he kept that part. But once you read it like this, it feels like it is a sarcastic rebuke, asking where they are, you know, asking as if they should be near them. So as a consequence, Hasid dropped the, his pursuit of a Japanese carrier task force in a futile attempt to aid United States forces in Battle of Summer. So he thought that they are asking to return. So this admiral returned back and said that I am here. And the other admiral said that, okay, but why are you here? I just wanted to ask your position. I didn't ask you to come. But due to a bad padding, the world wonders. They misunderstood the message. Okay. Okay, so to avoid this kind of padding and uh, message length expansion, let's, we can do something different called ciphertext stealing. Due to this word stealing, people think that this is cryptanalysis or something. No, this is just a method to avoid padding and message expansion. So this is a general method that allows encrypting messages that are not a multiple of block size B. Uses the last two message blocks, hence does not work on shorter messages. So if you're encrypting a single block, you cannot use this technique. But if it is more than one block, you can use this. Does not use padding, does not cause message expansion. So this, these are the fantastic properties, right? So let me show it with an example and assume that we are using the ECB mode. So in the ECB mode, we call that every block was encrypted independently. Now, I want to encrypt a plain text where the last block is not a multiple of the block size. So there are some empty bits here, okay? So question is, how can I encrypt this but still do not use any padding and does not cause any message expansion? So the ciphertext and the plain text are at the same length, okay? Idea is as follows. Encrypt this previous block, as usual, obtain the ciphertext block. Then just by looking at this uh, empty, size of this empty part, and so for this encrypted block, divide it as head and tails, where the size of tail is the size of this empty part, okay? So what you do is as follows. You take this unencrypted part, take the tail, add to the end, encrypt this whole thing, and write it here, and take this head and put it here. So this way, as you can see, the cipher text length and the plain text length are identical. I didn't use any padding. I didn't cause any message expansion. So the person who receives this wants to decrypt it back, right? So what they do is as follows. By looking at this uh, remaining part, mm -hmm. which is, you know, block size minus the size of this part is the size of the tail. So now they know the size of the tail. So what they do is decrypt this, okay? Take this plain text part and say that this is the last block. Take this tail, put it here. Take this final cipher text block and put it here decrypt it and obtain this part. So full disk encryption uses this idea. This is why you don't cause any message expansion or you don't need to use any padding, okay? A nice way to you know, obtain a method where the plain text size is identical to ciphertext size in terms of bits, I mean.